You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Hey there. Did you know Bakers always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Bakers app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Bakers today. Bakers, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore data. Well, I think today I had um, I had a bunch of stuff I wanted to talk about, but then the Super Bowl was coming up, and you know, on Saturday I realized, oh crap, I got to do the Super Bowl thing for sure because it's tomorrow. And then after the Super Bowl, I didn't do a podcast, and then the next day I did a podcast about the Super Bowl largely, and so I want to kind of get caught up a little bit on where we're at with some um, news and notes that I wanted to talk about before. So first of all, a couple extra Super Bowl news and notes things. So let's start with this. Uh, Super Bowl 2025 will be February 9th, 2025, again at 530. It's going to take place at the Caesars Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana, and it will be the Packers against somebody. But as far as this past Super Bowl, you know, I guess we should start with viewership. Um, Apparently there were 123.4 million people that watched this last Super Bowl. I believe the previous high, well, I think 2023 was 115 million. Prior to that, 2015 was 114 million. I think 2022 was only like 99 million. The the thing that I really don't like about it, I know there's there's a whole big battle going on about viewership and whatnot, which is completely beside the point that's actually important to me. The, the thing that I don't like about this is that it's going to encourage the NFL to continue doing what I wish the NFL wouldn't do, and that is gush over... The superstars, the nonstop, incessant talk about the Chiefs is going to be absolutely nauseating. And and the NFL's desire and just hope that, first of all, Taylor Swift stays involved with Travis Kelsey, which I saw the betting odds on that were not super great. <laughs> so it was like the betting odds, betting odds were like minus 110 that that was Taylor Swift's uh, last time visiting a Chiefs game. But it's just going to continue to encourage the NFL to push uh, sort of against themselves in a way. I mean, I, I'm not trying to get into the conspiracy theory topic of do they kind of tilt the results? You know, do, do they? I generally am opposed to conspiracy theories because conspiracies are hide hard to keep under wraps. And we're talking about you know probably dozens at least of people in the NFL front office that are aware of this scheme, and then. You know, at least a, a handful of refs. I just, I struggle to believe that that would be completely kept under wraps. But still, the NFL obviously is working against itself insofar as the desire is for parity. What we want is for different results. We want, you know, good teams to kind of work their way back down and for bad teams to work their way back up. And they've tried to build a league that has that. They've got the salary cap, they've got the draft set up. Um, a certain way they got the, uh, um, you know, waiver priorities. And I think that's a good thing. I I think generally the NFL is rooting for the bad teams to become good teams, but on a, on a more public level, they seem to be rooting for the, the, the good team. And, And maybe that's the right thing to do. Maybe it's, it's sort of a, you know, like WWE thing where, you know, you, the bad teams are the heels and the good teams are the, whatever you call them, the baby face. And you kind of hope that a new team rises and we can start bragging about that team. I, I I don't know, but I just don't like that they were proven right by gushing all over the 40 or the 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 Chiefs all year and by, you know, spending all this time talking about Mahomes and Reed and Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey and, you know, talking about their relationship on football shows as opposed to things that matter and are relevant to football, that they were proven right. And, and the massive spike in people watching, I have no doubt has a lot to do with, I mean, we've seen 49ers Chiefs before. There's no doubt to me that the spike has a lot to do with the fact that Taylor Swift is involved with the Super Bowl. 
Now, if we were to put a positive uh, spin on this, which I know most people uh, would probably disagree with, especially the anti-Swifties, but allow me to propose a, a, a non-anti-Swifty compromise. Obviously, having superstars there has helped to elevate the game, right? We should promote it more. Listen, I liked it when Taylor Swift was, you know, up in the stands and we had, you know, Lil Wayne, Simone Biles, Tony Shaloub. I wouldn't mind having like a star off, you know, start comping Lil Wayne, not that he needs it, but start comping some of these people, some seats up in the boxes. And and listen, if you're an owner, you don't even need the, the NFL prompting you. You should just do this. If you're you know, you know how many Dallas Cowboys fans there are that are popular celebrities? If you're the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, start inviting celebrities to come hang out in your box. That's all you got to do. Just open the door and let them walk in and sit next to you. The camera's going to catch them. You know, it's got to be like a, a major superstar that might actually move the needle, but that's that's my compromise. Having celebrities kind of declare their allegiances. And obviously the Packers will largely be a little Wayne, which, you know, as far as star power goes, I'm fine with that. But the NFL bet on Taylor Swift, and uh, the bet paid off, and I think that's unfortunate. There's also kind of a funny rumor out there. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. I just found out about it today. There is such a thing as a Cousins curse. No team has lost to Kirk Cousins and won the Super Bowl the same year. And the 49ers lost to the Vikings this year, 22-17. to Definitely sucks to be in the NFC North, then. It'd be good if he actually leaves, because I'm, I, don't need, I don't need that nonsense in my life. I didn't even realize it was a cousin's curse. Maybe that's the reason we haven't won. Maybe, maybe that's, he ruined Aaron Rodgers' <laughs> career. <laughs> but I want to thank uh, Kirk Cousins for his service. Thank you for beating the 49ers and preventing a horrible, horrible situation where instead of talking about maybe Shanahan and the 49ers are overrated, they're a bunch of bums, we'd be talking about Shanahan has now cemented his legacy and blah, 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 blah. Again, that's the reason why I wanted this outcome. How much bigger are the Chiefs now than they were two days ago? They're not. Nobody cares. The Chiefs are still the Chiefs. And if they win it next year, same thing. It's just It just adds to the dynasty. It just becomes a question of can they be bigger than the Patriots? They're, they're, they didn't hardly move the needle. It was back-to-back. Like, okay, cool, back-to-back. Freaking whatever. But the, the, the difference in the 49ers from being like this elite powerhouse team to now being seen as some fraudulent hack, again, it's, it's gone too far in the other direction, but it's a great scenario. If the Chiefs lose, it doesn't do that. They're a dynasty. It doesn't change anything. They're still the Chiefs. They're still going to come back next year, and they're probably going to win it next year. There was only one situation where somebody walks away, and they are massively scarred by this, and that's, that's the 49ers. It wouldn't be the Chiefs. By the way, I talked last night about uh, AI and the growth of AI. If you don't believe me, look at the Super Bowl commercials. Everything was AI. Microsoft did a commercial about AI. Etsy did a commercial promoting how their AI is going to help. Google's Pixel is AI-centered. Everything is AI. Beyond that, I, I forgot to mention this yesterday. Another thing, if you're unsure about the growth of this, NVIDIA has gone all in on AI. They, they have become the AI chip manufacturer du jour, and as a result, have become one of the largest companies in the entire world. I saw this article a few days ago on Fortune.com. 1.72 trillion AI chip giant NVIDIA has skyrocketed in value so fast, it's about to pass Amazon as the fourth most valuable U.S. company. Are you starting to understand now? <laughs> Do you get it? Shares are up more than 40% so far in 2024. NVIDIA is massive. To be able to grow 40% in like two months because of their, I don't want to say pivot, because I'm sure they've already been doing it, but making themselves the AI chip leaders is insane. And that's why you've got a guy out there trying to raise trillions of dollars for a chip manufacturing co company, because those are going to be the biggest companies in the world. AI companies are going to dominate everything. They're going to dwarf companies like Amazon. So I, I bring that up in part because, you know, again, a ton of commercials were AI based, but then there was also this uh, article here talking about how most people are still very skeptical. Only 10% are excited about the um, possibilities, whereas like 53% are more concerned than excited. Presumably the rest are unsure or whatever. But look, here, here's what I'll say about AI, and then I'll get off it because I feel like I can probably talk about this for the next hour. The tsunami's coming, so grab the surfboard. That's, that's all I can tell you. Learn to surf because it's coming and it's going to wipe out everything. 
Or you can stand on the beach and look out there and go, this is terrible. Like, all right, well, this, you're, that's okay. Anyways, my final, I think my final Super Bowl note, um, I see this from Inquisitor. Here's why Justin Bieber declined Usher's invitation to perform together at the Super Bowl. I didn't read the article. I don't want to read the article. I don't need to read the article. I've already said I loved the Super Bowl halftime show. Everything about it was great. Justin Bieber would have freaking ruined it. Usher was fine. I wasn't a huge Usher fan, but it's like Usher's just like one of those things. If you were my age, Usher was just everywhere. It's not like I went out of my way to listen to Usher. You didn't have to. He was everywhere. You turn on the radio, you hear Usher, and you kind of, you know, you move to it a little bit like, oh, yeah. But then Lil John comes in and it's like, oh my good Lord, this is amazing. And then Ludacris comes out. Everything was just, it was fantastic. Alicia Keys, are you kidding me? This was, this was like my high school just brought back to life. It just brought me right back to like that late high school, early college era, which is a great era for most people. I didn't even like high school, but still, it was the, th- that was the good times. Justin Bieber, though, he had nothing to do with that. Justin Bieber had, n- I, don't, I don't have a single memory of Justin Bieber other than being a scrawny little D-bag when I was in high school. Nobody liked Justin Bieber. In fact, I think the first time I ever heard of Justin Bieber was after college. And the only reason I remember it was because I was in Milwaukee hanging out with this lady friend of mine, and he came on the radio. It's the only reason I know that it was in college, because I didn't even know her until college. And she was like, oh, it's Justin Bieber. I'm like, you mean Justin Bieber? She's like, no, Justin Bieber. I'm like, no, Bieber. Because Justin Bieber was a really talented and semi, you know, famous as far as D3 goes, running back for the Warhawks. I didn't even know who Justin Bieber was. I knew Justin Bieber. So wrong era, wrong genre, wrong dude. Thank you, Justin Bieber, for declining Usher's invitation. Usher, you moron. Why did you invite him? That would have been a disaster. Wouldn't have worked. Wouldn't have fit. I would have hated it. That's how you know it was a perfect Super Bowl, because destiny just wouldn't allow this to be a thing. Justin freaking Bieber. No thanks, dude. Anyways, uh, we'll take a little bit of an early break, since that's a good little break point. Done talking about the Super Bowl. We're moving on. Uh, I do have more news and notes for the NFL, the NFC North, the Packers, as well as a, uh, I know we already did a 32-team recap, but NBC Sports also did that, so I want to kind of pour through that and look at some of the funny notes that they had, as well as, you know, relevant teams. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. Ah, mmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive, sought after, rare, and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at caskers.com. So a couple other little random news and notes. Uh, Mr. Mitch Trubisky, legend, apparently was released by the Pittsburgh Steelers. It makes me sad. If we had need for a third quarterback, if that was still kind of a thing, I'd say we should go do it. But uh, I don't know. Wish the best for him. Shame to see him go. Uh, slightly old news, but again, I'm just kind of getting caught up here. Um, uh, Mike Zimmer finally did find a job. He is going to be the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys. That does seem to be kind of the MO of the Dallas Cowboys. They, they really like Jerry Jones or whoever it is pulling the lever really likes the more old established guys. He went out and got Mike McCarthy. He's getting Mike Zimmer. He got Dan Quinn. It seemed to work for him. 
at least so far, but uh, it'll be interesting to see the dynamic there, whether the defense improves or regresses, and if things start to go south, if Zimmer starts attacking the players. (laughs) And seeing how Cowboys massively overreacted to everything, and I went through that whole uh, thread where they were talking about wanting to get rid of like their best pass rusher on the entire team, a very good football player that 31 fan bases would love to have because he did an interview with Jordan Love who knocked him out of the playoffs. I'm sure they're going to love this hire because Zimmer probably agrees. He's probably the only coach that's like, you did an interview with the enemy, you're off my team. In other uh, coaching news, Jim Leonard did get a job in the NFL and it was as a DB coach for the Broncos. So I, I had mentioned before that I would be shocked if he took a job like this. And it does sound like Jim Leonard had a little bit of a window and just missed it. Um, I, I guess the the time has passed for Jim Leonard. I, I do still find it to be a little bit odd. I don't know if it's just that that's not really what people are looking for anymore, or what would have caused this to go so south for Jim Leonard. But he had an opportunity to be a defensive coordinator. He turned it down. Um, Wisconsin went in a different direction. He left. He took a couple years, and I guess the NFL and pretty much everybody forgot about him. So. He has, uh, he, 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 he bet on the Badgers and it was a terrible bet. He could currently be an NFL defensive coordinator. And if things had gone well for the Packers over the last three years, who knows, he could be getting calls for head coaching jobs. But now he's, you know, after being a uh, assistant to, what was it, Illinois with Brett Bielema, he is now uh, working his way back up as a DB coach in the NFL. So good, I think he's a great hire by the Broncos. I have no idea if he could be a, a good DC, but I would have to assume he'd be a decent defensive backs coach. It's unfortunate that we couldn't have grabbed him for that. And you almost wonder if Jim Leonard would, I mean, I'm guessing he would have taken it if we offered it, but it sounds like we just completely went in a different direction. And uh, the guy that we have really likes the guy that's there. And, and that's the thing. Halfley knows Leonard. Halfley was the, he was Jim Leonard's defensive backs coach. A lot of people got mad at me when I posted that on social media. As if I was saying, like, he's better than Leonard. Or so people get so sensitive about every damn thing you say. Like, I'm just posting something, re- like, it's just, it's interesting. Like, it's, isn't, isn't that crazy? Our DC was a guy that a lot of people are interested in, it's DB coach. Like, that's, it doesn't mean better. It's just an interesting tidbit on the timeline. But, uh, so, relevance? Who can, like, bro, freaking just get off social media. I don't know what to tell you. People just go on social media and see information. They're just like, so? Who cares? This is stupid. Like, well, then go outside and do something. Go do something not stupid instead of staring at people saying stupid things and commenting that it's stupid because that seems even more stupid. Also had a note on Andy Andy Reid not retiring. We already kind of touched on that. It sounds like not only is he not leaving, but he's probably going to get a massive pay raise and extension and uh, just keep on, keep on keeping on there. And then comes the Jets, who have just been like my new favorite punching bag. Because they're so stupid. And, and again, I get to revel in it because I was told for a very long time in the offseason that the Packers are wrong and they're stupid and their GM's an idiot and the Jets are really smart and they, they make a good decision and they're going to treat Rodgers right. And they, they do everything right and we do everything wrong. And so now watching this complete disaster, it's like you, the people that said that could not have been more wrong about anything in their entire lives. I, I would be stunned to find out that they've made bigger mistakes and said dumber things. couple notes here. And I already gone in on the, if, if you want, go back in time and listen to what I've said about the Jets. We've covered this pretty extensively with a lot of the Aaron Rodgers news and stuff that came out and the way that Salah handled it, which was abysmal. And the, the way that the team is being run by Rodgers, which again, a lot of people are saying that's what the Packers should have done, which is not a good idea. But we got some more. It just keeps on going. This is the most inept garbage organization in the world. Listen, bad teams are bad teams for a reason. If you're going to go into this and saying the team that has had massive success over the years is stupid and the team that's been a dumpster fire for like several generations is the really smart team, you're probably fighting a losing battle and are not thinking very clearly. If I could put that as politely as I possibly could. Ari Mirov reported February 8th, Jets owner Woody Johnson to reporters at the NFL Honors, quote, we need a backup quarterback. We didn't have one last year. You freaking D-bag. The guy that played quarterback for you almost the entire year, the guy that you drafted, the guy that you ruined, the guy that you benched to get Aaron Rodgers, And then the guy that you sat on the bench and told him, just give it up because you're not playing anymore. And then the next week decided, never mind, why don't you suit up and play? And then he's like, F you, I'm not playing for you. 
And then that gets leaked to the media because your organization is trash. So then he comes back and he's like, never mind, I'll play. That looks bad. So then he plays for you in your trash organization. And now you say that your starting quarterback, the guy that you drafted, isn't even a backup. We didn't have one last year. Jeez. I know they're shipping them off anyway, so they don't care. But what a freaking D-bag comment that is. You want to talk about treating people? I would love to hear Aaron Rodgers' comments on this comment about a very young quarterback that he's spoken very glowingly of. I wonder if he would agree with the sentiment that he's not even a backup, seeing as how it's really important that we treat people right. But oh, just wait, it gets worse for the Jets. Rich Samini, New York Jets guy, says, in a red carpet interview with Jeff Darlington, Woody Johnson dropped this nugget. He said Robert Sala would concentrate on offense in 2024, leaving the defense to Jeff Ulbrich. Interesting. This is certainly not an endorsement for Hackett, it says. Then he quote tweets that, and it's a quote. It says, Johnson, quote, Sala is going to be a, a lot better head coach. One thing about head coaches is you get better as you get more experience. He's going to concentrate on offense. He's got Jeff to kind of do the defense, and we've got a good special teams. It's offense, offense, offense. Bro, Sala is a defensive guy. He's your defense. Let him be the defensive guy. Fire the offensive coordinator. Find someone that can do the job and let Sala be the head coach slash defensive guru. But no, we're going we're gonna to take away the defensive mind, the guy that we hire because he's a brilliant defensive mind. We're going to make him an offensive guy. We're going to let Jeff Ulbrich run the defense because I guess why not? And then we have an offensive coordinator who's going to continue to take a paycheck by not doing a damn thing, which came out in that article that basically he doesn't do anything because I guess he's got job security because of Aaron Rodgers. So he's going to kick his feet up and not do a damn thing and suck at his job. And now the head coach is going to come in and do his job for him rather than doing his own job because we can't man up and fire the guy that needs to be fired because we have given this entire team over to Aaron Rodgers. And apparently Aaron Rodgers is not really concerned about success as much as he is about making sure his friends have jobs and that he is in control of everything so that his friends can have jobs. And then secondarily, hopefully we can win some games, which as long as I'm healthy, I'm sure he just thinks we're just going to win all the time because I'll be healthy and the offensive coordinator is just going to do whatever I want, which is perfect because I'm the one that's going to make this thing go. I just, it's, it's unbelievable how garbage this team is, how freaking soft and weak they are. This is pathetic nonsense. The fact that Robert Sala, Mr. Tough Guy, what if you want to talk about fake tough guys? People are talking about fake tough guys about the Packers. This is some fake tough guy stuff. Robert Sala is a fake tough guy. If you can't stand up to Aaron Rodgers, he's going to tell you how to run your team and you're just going to sit there and take it. Dude, I don't give a damn. Woody Johnson, you, you, you're a freaking billionaire and you own a football team and you're going to let this guy tell you what to do. I just, I don't get it, man. Maybe that, maybe that's smart. Maybe that's how people become successful is because they just make decisions like this. I don't know. I couldn't do it. I'm too prideful to let another grown man, Aaron Rodgers, who's just a guy that's my age, come in. Like, if he just came in my house and told me how to run my house and how to treat my wife and how to talk to my kids, I don't know if I could beat him in a fight. Probably not. He's a professional athlete. But we'd find out right then and there. This is, this is unbelievable that a team could be run this bad. But this is why parody doesn't work. Because there are so many teams that are run by inept morons if, if, if Rodgers wasn't so complicit in this, I would really feel bad for him because he it's like the guy wants to get away. He wants to go somewhere where he can have the defense and all this stuff and, and, and kind of just work things the way that he wants. You know, again, it's just not compatible with the Packers, which sucks. It'd be great if he could retire here, but whatever. We got our thing. He's got his thing. I get it. You feel bad, but at the same time, it's like you picked them. You picked them and then you put them in this situation. They're complicit and wrong for allowing you to ruin the team this way, but you're ruining the damn team, so I can't even feel bad for you. So I'm just going to sit back here and watch it burn and laugh. I'm going to laugh. And I tell you what, I tell you what, massive round of applause. If he comes back healthy and they manage to tear things up because Rodgers just fights through all the crap, he fights through the terrible offensive line, he fights through not having an offensive coordinator and having a defensive mind, try to run the offense, but at the same time kind of not do it. You're going to have basically two very important people not do anything because Rodgers is really running the offense. And then you got some other guy running the defense and just this discombobulated pile of garbage on top of just having a a team that is falling apart from the inside because you got a coach who's who's going psycho and everybody's just leaking to the media because nobody respects anybody, which makes sense because, again, fake tough guys. He garners no respect in that building, obviously. You want to find out where there's the most respect and the best-run teams? Find the quietest teams. 
Nothing leaks out of Green Bay. Makes me sad in the offseason because we never learn anything. But it's a good thing. Means you're a well-run organization. Oh, the Jets, I swear. I get, you know, we don't generally cross paths with them. I know they suck. I know they're incompetent. But man, when you immerse yourself in what's going on over there, you really realize. Like, I've seen the Lions and it's like, yeah, you guys are kind of stupid. And the Bears kind of, you know, the McCaskies and all that. It's, It's not a great situation. They don't do a great job. But you watch the Jets, and it's like, good lord, how do you win anything? I mean, I guess the the parody thing kind of forces you when you know you get top three picks every year. You come across a couple good picks once in a while. Sometimes it's impossible to miss. But jeez, you guys suck. Anyways, I'll tell you what. Why don't we take a second break here? Uh, nice little break. That's the last. Oh, you know what? Is it the last? Let me check one thing here. Yeah, it's the last of the um, general NFL news, I guess. So before we move into NFC North and any other topics. Why don't we just go ahead and take a nice little break? We will take a break. We'll be right back. So most of the NFC North stuff really just centers around the Chicago Bears and this number one pick thing, which I I really genuinely believe is... We we do this a lot as far as the NFL draft. We we try to drum up a lot of drama and a lot of like what-if scenarios, and really everybody kind of knows what's going to happen. Now that, that, you know, we'll see. But I, I think this is very obviously going to be the Bears select Caleb Williams number one. Bears fans refuse to acknowledge that. I have, by the way, small promotion here, because even I forget about it. Um, as far as I know, I have the largest NFL draft Facebook group. And so I kind of peruse that a little bit. I should probably also promote that I am uh, planning on doing, I, I say planning, it's already in action, but it seemed like nobody cared. So I didn't, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen. A um, $100 giveaway. And the way that it works is you submit your mock draft into the group. I may have to refine that a little bit because I don't know who's participating and who's just, you know, somebody's just going to get $100 and be like, who the heck are you? What's going on? And then the most popular mock draft, these are team mocks. The most popular team mock. So if you did a Packers one or a Giant, you can do one for each team. I don't care. The one that gets the most engagement and, and whatnot, it could even be negative engagement. I don't care. There's no, no engagement is bad engagement. I could actually do this on Twitter too if I wanted to actually. Maybe I will. I don't know. I feel like a, a group with almost 17,000 people in it would be a uh, good place to go, but you post something, they're just like, yeah, I don't care. Post post, post the mock draft so I can say, ha ha, you're an idiot. That's all I'm here for. I don't want those stupid $100. But anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a YouTube video out of it. And then the YouTube video that gets the most, I guess, positive engagement. I'm, I don't remember exactly how I phrased it or what. I'm trying to think exactly how to do that. Could just do likes, I guess. But that person would end up winning. Maybe I'll do it on Facebook and Twitter and we'll just see which ones get the most engagement. But uh, the Facebook group, I mean, it's just Facebook forward slash groups forward slash mock drafts, or just go on Facebook. It's NFL mock draft dash NFL draft fanatics. If you type in NFL draft, it should be one of the top ones. I finally updated the graphics since the robot can help me with that. I've had this old, just nasty looking thing for a long time that I made on like Canva. It's, It's from 2018, which I think is when I started it. And for whatever reason, I put 2108, so it's just had like a 2108 on it, and I just left it because I was like, yeah, it's kind of funny. But we got that updated and looking better, so uh, yeah, why not? Let's grow the group. I don't think you can really make money with Facebook groups, but because I'm stupid and I didn't grow a page, I grew a group, and Facebook's like groups are stupid, but if you want to make money, you can make a page and make money, so whatever. But uh, yeah, there's that. So anyways, um, getting back to my original point, despite a lot of Bears fans being convinced that Justin Fields is staying, It really does feel, to me, like it's just going to be a, you know, really boring, they're going to take Caleb Williams number one, et cetera, et cetera. However, there's a lot of different opinions out there. And this one is one of my favorites. Um, Merrill Hodge has been in the news quite a lot lately um, with his assessment of Caleb Williams. And people have been pulling receipts. You know, some of them are very, very positive as far as like he he said he wouldn't touch, I think Johnny Manziel with like a six round pick or something like that. He's 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 going to be terrible. So that was dead on with that. And then he was very wrong with something else. I don't remember exactly what. But here's what he had to say about Caleb Williams. Well, I've only watched Caleb Williams three games last year, three this year. So I'm only halfway done. Okay. The one thing that I that is clear, he is not special. He is not something unique like a Patrick Mahomes. And I hope the Bears don't think. Well, let's 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 try to make up for our mistake when we pass up Patrick Mahomes and go get the Patrick Mahomes. The kid is not Patrick Mahomes. Ain't even remotely close to that. It is unfair to Justin Fields. He has had new coordinator, new coordinator, new coordinator. There's no possible way you can know about your guy when you do that. It's the worst thing that can happen to any player, especially the quarterback. Now, 
when Justin came out, the one thing that I thought he had, he had just an inexperience. He just needed more experience. He lacked that. But what I have seen in Justin Fields, from my evaluation, there's enough growth and hope there that I would not lose. I would not let him go because I see enough there. Well, I will so obviously I massively disagree with that on multiple fronts. Number one, I do think Caleb Williams is special. That doesn't mean he's going to be good. It just means he's special, as in he has special traits. And if he can um, meet his full potential, he, he has a very rare ceiling. That's my opinion. I haven't watched a ton of them, but you can just see from from what his abilities are as far as his his arm talent, I guess. Rare arm abilities. He might be trash, but again, that's a separate conversation. Beyond that, I, I think to to keep after three years playing this freaking game where, well, we just can't know about Justin Fields. We just can't know. You can't expect somebody after three years to learn how to read a defense or to anticipate things because he's had different coordinators, and I'm sure they all teach him to do different things rather than, you know, anticipate some of them are like yeah you should sometimes they're like no you should hold on to it for a really long time and take a sack so it gets confusing when you have all these different coordinators that that don't have a cohesive message on um, basic things that every quarterback needs to do but again I don't care all I want is to be a Bears fan and feel hopeless I want to put myself in a position of a Bears fan that's like hey Justin might be the guy but yet he's probably not and but it, but maybe we go Caleb and then you got this guy saying Caleb's not that great like don't don't do it it just instills a lot of panic and a lot of fear. And then you get the other side of this, which is what I tend to agree with more. Um, Brian Urlacher, who obviously is a legendary Chicago Bear. And this is more what I think. Keep track of everything going on with the Bears and all these talk about the Justin Fields and the Caleb Williams. Do you feel like, do you have a strong opinion on what they should do over there? Yes and no. You know, I think anytime the, the local radio stations want to talk to me, it's about that. Um, I don't I don't envy their position. You know, they have to make a tough decision with Justin, who they could be the guy, may not be the guy. Or do you, last year they had the number one pick and they passed up on CJ Stroud. Um, they could have had him last year. Um, it's just, it's, it's tough to, uh, to be in that position, I guess. But I, I think at this point, if people are still asking if Justin is the guy, he's probably not the guy, right? Three years in, if they're still saying, hey, is he going to be our guy? Um, and then they're sitting there with the number one pick. So I th- the pretty good players sitting there well, as well, at least it wasn't college and Caleb Williams. I think it's a, in my opinion, they probably have to draft the kid. So, duh, right? I mean, he, he's exactly right. We do this every single year, and, and they've already been proven wrong. Last year, they bet on fields. They traded away the pick, and they were wrong because they could have had C.J. Stroud, and they would be in a better position. They potentially could have been competing for a, a playoff uh, or, or a potential Super Bowl candidate, just like the Texans are. Probably not because I don't think they... they uh, you know, they don't seem to be as, as good of an organization right now as far as the Texans seem to be doing some things right. They got a good coach and they've had some good picks and et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, they've already been proven wrong. And, and, and so now after being proven wrong about Justin Fields, what, you're going to bet on him again with another new offensive coordinator? Because that's not getting fixed. That offensive coordinator has gone. So what are we doing here? I mean, come on, man. There's no way. There's no way. We, we did this last... Is he the guy? Is he the guy? Is he the guy? And then you bet on him, and you were wrong. And now we say, is he the guy? Is he the guy? Well, we, we can't know because he has different offensive coordinators. So let's fire the offensive coordinator, then bring in a new one, and what? Bring back Fields so that he can disappoint again, and we can watch these other quarterbacks go on to have great careers on other teams, and we can sit here and go, well, it's not his fault. It's the offensive coordinator. It, he doesn't have an offensive line. Brock Purdy doesn't have an offensive line. He has one tackle and nothing, and this freaking seventh-round pick is tearing up the league. Lots of teams don't have offensive lines. Quit making freaking excuses. You sound pathetic. Overcome. You ever hear of that? Don't make me bust out the pull yourself up by your bootstraps, because I'll do it. Man up. Quit whining and complaining and making excuses. The guy can't do it. He can't overcome anything. There's no growth. There's no improvement. He's the same freaking bum he was from year one to year two to year three. He's not better. In fact, he massively regressed considering in year two, he was some elite rushing quarterback, which I said was in unsustainable, and it was, and he regressed. And so overall, he regressed. He was not as good overall as he was in 2022 because he didn't run as well. And he still is not a good passer. Maybe he is slightly better as a passer. But after three years, do you want a guy that's just slightly subpar? 
is what like the twentieth best quarterback as as a passer. That's what you. That's what we're aiming for. Is that good enough? Would you like a, a chance to be a top five? Do you give a crap about ever having a quarterback in franchise history? Because I'm telling you right now, if what you want, and I said this about the Packers. Your goal shouldn't be to just be good or to get marginally better. It should be to freaking dominate. It should be to just obliterate and eviscerate everything in your path. Justin Fields will never be that guy. One of these other quarterbacks might be. I don't know. Maybe they won't be. But your your chances are zero if you don't take a chance. Michael Scott, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. I mean, I I hate to give you good advice, but let's not be stupid about this. And I don't think they are being stupid. I think they know damn well what they're doing. They're going to, I mean, they're going to go through the process. They don't officially know anything yet. They got to go through their meetings. And so there's a no official stance, but everybody in the back of their mind, as they go into this meeting where they're not making official decisions, every single one of them has already come to the conclusion in their own mind. There's no freaking way we're keeping Justin Fields. And so the question more centers around, do we, you know, do we take Caleb? Do we take Drake? Do we take Jalen? Or Jaden, excuse me, not Jalen. All three right now are currently in the top five as far as the consensus big board, with a lot of talk about J.J. McCarthy rocketing up. That, by the way, seems, if anybody wants to replicate what the Packers did with Jordan Love, it sounds like J.J. McCarthy is your opportunity. I don't know exactly what team is going to go that route. What team would that make sense for? If McCarthy does fall, and I'm the 49ers, I'd probably do it. Because... I mean, Brock Purdy has been fine, but I mean, this is a team that has been knocking at the door of a Super Bowl with like backup quarterbacks for a long time. And if you want to just ride with with uh, Brock Purdy for a year or two or however until J.J. McCarthy figures it out and then potentially becomes like a top five, top 10 quarterback, maybe, I don't know. I'm just saying if that's the whole thing with him is he has elite potential but just needs a couple years to sit, you can afford to take those couple years and, uh, you know, finally have your guy. I don't know. Anyways, that's the only question. And then there, I have seen some people say, which is the scariest option as a, from a Packers fan perspective, is that Caleb and Drake may are like 1A, 1B. It doesn't make that big. Like, you really like both of them. You genuinely believe, or Jaden Daniels, perhaps, if you have three that you think are almost identical. I mean, the, the, the well, let me finish the first thought. The scariest thing is they trade back, they still get a quarterback that they like, and they get a haul. That's sort of the biggest negative. But the scary thing is, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm serious about this. If, if you're a Chicago Bears guy, if I'm the GM, I'm looking at this going, we can't trade it. We can't trade it. We have to be the ones in control of this. We cannot allow a situation where we trade this, this spot away. Somebody comes up and takes the next Pat Mahomes and we get stuck with a guy that can't play. We need to make the decision. We're not going to allow somebody else to dictate to us. We need to determine who the best is. Even if on our grading scale, it's it's... It's almost nearly identical. When then we got to figure out what it is. That if, if they're even, then you go Caleb Williams because he has a higher ceiling, I believe. Find a way to to figure out. I don't care if you got a freaking, you know, by by bring in an uneven number of of uh, your scouts and have them come in the room and everybody votes on who they think is better, Drake Mayer, Caleb. I don't care if it comes down to that. You have to determine who's better. You have to make a decision. I mean, of course, they could get lucky and, and luck their way into somebody trades up and, and takes the Bryce Young while you trade back and get the, the, the better player. That's possible. But as bad as your history has been, which has been an abysmal history with quarterbacks, you cannot allow that opportunity of somebody ta- allowing somebody to take the better quarterback route right from underneath you so you can get a couple extra picks. It's not worth it. There's nothing worth losing out on a premier quarterback prospect. Nothing. There's no amount of picks. Well, we can get three. We can get a haul of like three first round picks just to move back one spot. You're saying it's not worth. Listen, it's worth it if it works. But if you're asking me, would you trade Pat Mahomes for three picks? No, no, you don't do no amount of picks. Nothing is going to pry Pat Mahomes from my fingers. Nothing or any elite quarterback. If your goal is to actually win games and win Super Bowls, you never trade that away for anything. So find out who that guy is, do your freaking job, evaluate the quarterback and pick them. That's what you got to do. So I think that's what they're going to do. And if they don't, then I really hope that they fail. Whoever they trade with, if they trade with the freaking Patriots or Washington is a big one, a trade partner. There's actually rumors the Patriots might trade back, which seems unlikely to me, but whatever. Let, let's call it uh, Washington. If, if, if they trade up, I am going to wish for nothing more for that entire year, aside from a, a Packers Super Bowl victory. The thing that I want more than anything 
is for Washington to come away with a really, I'm, I'm not going to say, you know, like they get the good quarterback and whoever the Bears get is just trash. In fact, it'd be great if it was kind of like the other year where you had two really good quarterbacks in Pat Mahomes and uh, Mr. Massage Man. And then the Bears end up with the one bust from North Carolina, which, you know, again, they've got to be snake bit by that whole North Carolina thing. I know it's a different regime, but still. Could you imagine? Oh, if they traded away that spot and took Drake May, you got a guy that's got Pat Mahomes comps that you just handed to another team and you took the guy from North Carolina. Whew, you better be really right about that one. And he better not just be good. He better be way better than Caleb Williams, too. I don't know. I, I, I Even as a Packer fan, I find this um, fun. And then the final NFC North note that I have, um, and I don't know if this is true. This comes from a not super reputable source, but I don't care. Uh, apparently it comes via Tom Pelissero. So I, I, whatever, let me just find out what Tom Pelissero said. I don't know. He must've said it on a, that, that's one of these things these guys do is they watch all these programs and then they tweet it out and I can't find it because whatever, uh, Vikings wide receiver, Justin Jefferson wants to know the team's plans at quarterback before committing to a long-term contract per Tom Pelissero. Jefferson has said multiple times that he wants Kirk Cousins to stay in Minnesota. I'm not going to lie to me. Just give the guy a contract. Again, this is me just talking to Packer fans. I, I would never tell Kwesi this because I don't want him to do things that I don't like. Not that he would listen, but that's beside the point right now. Kirk Cousins is not a bad quarterback. I know he makes mistakes. I know all that stuff. Everybody makes mistakes. Jordan Love blew it in the last game. A lot of these guys, they, 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 they make mistakes. Things happen. Aaron Rodgers did it. All the greats have made mistakes. They're not perfect. But this guy has been a consensus top 10 quarterback forever. Many times top five. Now, I understand age is an issue, and I understand that he's breaking down, and I understand he just had a big injury, but if you can clear him medically, just give the guy like a three-year contract, and you can make it where he can you can get out of it after a couple, but just tell, you can't risk it with Justin Jefferson. Just say we're going to run this thing back, man. Listen, and you kind of got a decent situation. Your offensive line is finally getting fixed. You've got a great wide receiver. You've got another ascending wide receiver. You've got a new defensive coordinator. You got to go get some pieces. But that's that's the plan. We're going to build up this defense. We're going to get the defense rolling. We've got a great offense. We've got a good offensive mind that's running this thing. We're just we're going to run it back. That's what we're going to do. Blowing it up right now, where it's like you know we're going to lose like Daniel Hunter, which is a big blow. Now we're going to lose Kirk Cousins, and we got a wide receiver saying, "I don't know if I want to be here if Kirk Cousins isn't here." And we're, we're going to what? We're going to just just punt on quarterback this year because we're not going to be in striking distance of any of the good ones. So we're going to go out and get some free agent washed up has been that's no good. We're going to get whoever, like, just freaking pay the guy. Just pay him. And then draft some. Then, you know what? You draft J.J. McCarthy. That's the plan. You sign him to a contract, a three-year contract, one that you can get out of after maybe two. I know he always wants the the fully guaranteed contracts, but those are one year fully guaranteed. You're not getting fully guaranteed on a three-year contract when you're all busted up. It's not going to happen, but I will give you a three-year contract. That's like one and a half years guaranteed, whatever. I don't know. It's going to be a pretty hefty contract because you're a good quarterback. Maybe it's very incentive laden and, and there, there are injury clauses in it, but we'll, we'll make it maybe even more guaranteed, just not against injury kind of thing. I don't know if that's a thing, but um, you know, injury will be the only, re- like if you play, you're guaranteed to get the money. I know that's kind of the opposite of what the guarantees are for, um, to guarantee even if you're injured. But I, I mean, I'm just saying there's, there's a lot of other reasons why, you know, a lot of these contracts are just fake anyway. We're saying this isn't fake money. This is real money. And as long as you can stay healthy, you, you, you're getting all of it. I feel like would be a, uh, a decent contract. For, whatever. It doesn't matter. I feel like you got to pay them. And I, and I don't think they're going to. And I don't think they're going to lose Justin Jefferson because they're not going to allow it. They're going to tag him to death. They're never going to let him leave. But it's still a bad situation when you're tagging guys and you got a disgruntled wide receiver and you lost your quarterback who's been a really pivotal part of your offensive success for a long time. You finally got an offensive line that works. You guys have had a terrible offensive line for so long. Now you've got a pretty admirable offensive line. I just I just feel like they're they're just starting to get into a rhythm and they're just falling apart at the same time. And it's like, guys, just... For so long, and that's the thing, under Zimmer, they, they just kept keeping it together and keeping it together and keeping it together. And it's like, man, at some point you got to blow it up. And it's like they never really did. They they kind of changed and altered, but then never really, it's like a slow trickle away and like the trickling away is becoming more rapid and they're not really adding as fast. It's just, it's kind of a mess. And that's where I get confused with the Vikings because I just, I struggle to see 
the finish line based on the way things are going. And again, if if it's me and I understand, you know, I'm 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 obviously concerned about the the cap and all that. I just we're in a weird situation where, I mean, do we just blow it up? I mean, that sucks for Justin Jefferson. And obviously, we've seen from the Packers you can rebound pretty quick, but that that all assumes you have a quarterback. Who's your quarterback? And I, I just feel like they're too good to be a team that's going to end up getting a top five pick, even without a quarterback. I mean, they, they might suck, but they're going to pick, you know, ninth, 10th, 11th. And, and next year's supposed to be a terrible quarterback class, supposedly. So this is your shot. You're probably going to miss out. Next year, there's nobody worth drafting unless somebody emerges. And even then, you're probably not going to be within striking distance because there might be one really good guy and it's going to be the person with the number one pick and that's not going to be you. So what are we doing? What's, what's the freaking plan here? You're going to try to hit a free agent? What, a free agent better than what you got in Kirk Cousins? Because that's not going to happen. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not as immersed in the Vikings as I, as I am, obviously, with the Packers. So I don't know what all the rumors and, and everything is. I just, from my perspective, I don't know why they've been so anti-Cousins for so long. Um, they, they, there's, you know, 50% of the fan base and the team as a whole just seems like they want him out constantly. And I, And again, I get it, but this is why... You need to be smarter about your approach. You should have been planning for this a long time ago. When, 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 where was the the quarterback pick? I mean, aside from some, you know, later round guys that you invested in that turned out to be nothing. Where was the investment? Where was the the forethought into the future, looking at man, we we're going to need a quarterback pretty soon here. We got this guy on this one year contract. We keep renewing the one year fully guaranteed, one year fully guaranteed. We know we got to get out of this death cycle at some point, either giving him a longer contract, which he'll agree to, which I don't know if we're ever going to come to that agreement. Or um, or we, we got to draft somebody. We have to have a plan for the future, and they just haven't been planning for it. They've just been extending everybody and waiting for everybody to leave and, and just messing everything up, and now everybody's leaving, and, and they're going to allow Daniil to walk, which is like, why are you doing that? He's one of the best pass rushers in the NFL. And they're like, eh, I don't know. I mean, they are, they, are, they are the team that is making me look wrong about everything because it's constantly like Daniil Hunter's a guy you're never going to let walk. When you have a good quarterback like Kirk Cousins, you don't let them leave. You don't let these guys, you just don't let them leave. And they're just leaving. And we'll see. Maybe they won't. But it's just like, what what, what are we doing here? So, I don't know. Anyways, I guess we'll leave it at that. Um, I did have some more Packers stuff as well as just some more general NFL stuff. But I feel like we've done good for today. So let's leave it at that. You guys have a good rest of your day. I'll talk to you tonight, tomorrow, whatever. Have a good one. Bye-bye.